Hello everyone, my name is Andron Ali, the Bazooka Prophet, and today we're working on the non or the dative remarkable phase in the pentose phosphate pathway. Now, remember in our previous video, we talked about the or the dative uh, uh, irreversible phase of the pentose phosphate pathway. So, in this video, we'll be going straight to the non or the dative reversible step. Now, please take note a lot of persons have complained bitterly about. They are, uh, they are uh, lack of understanding on this aspect. So in this video, I'm taking my time to explain to you what this non oxidative reversible phase, how it works. Now we should understand that in the non oxidative reversible phase, it includes or it involves four major steps. And the steps are analyzed right here on the board. This is the step one, the step two, the step three, and the step four. So we continue. Now we should understand that in our previous video, we talked about how ribophosphate phosphate is formed. And that ribophosphate phosphate, we isomerize with the ribophosphate phosphate. And when that happens, it is then converted to xylophosphate phosphate by the enzyme. Which we call the phosphopentose epimerase. Is that understood? Now, if you look at this video clearly, you will understand that in this ribophosphate phosphate, two molecules of ribophosphate phosphate are involved. And if that is to be well understood, it will also yield two molecules of xylulose 5 phosphate. Exactly. Now, when that happens, this is this is the first the first step. Now, in the second step, since we have two molecules of xylulose five phosphate here, one molecule of this xylulose five phosphate we combine with a single molecule of the ribose five phosphate, and the enzyme that is involved is called the the Transketolase. Now understand that in this non oxidative pathway, the two major enzymes that are very, very crucial and important are the transketolase and the transaldolase. Now we have said that a single molecule of, uh, of the xylulophile force we form in the first step, we combine with a single molecule of the ribose 5-phosphate and at the end that we act on it is called the transketolase. Now we should understand that this transketolase is an enzyme and a cofactor we act on it which is dependent on the thiamine pyrophosphate and when that happens we should understand that this enzyme we remove two take note we remove two carbon from this ribophosphate phosphate and add to this xylulophosphate phosphate to give you what we call the pseudo eptulose 7 phosphate while the remaining three carbon we give what we call the glyceride phosphate now take note this is the first this is the second the second step now to most of the third step we should understand that this sedimentum seven phosphate and this glyceride phosphate, when they combine together in the presence of transaldolase, we should understand that three carbon will be removed from this pseudo eptosome phosphate and be added to this glyceride phosphate, which will now be transformed to what now? To fructose cis phosphate and the many one here we found to call we also be transformed to what we call the erythros erythros for what phosphate now remember i've told you that the enzyme involved is called the trans -adolase. now two major products here are now being formed which are the fructose cis phosphate and the erythros for phosphate now we move in the last step of this reaction of this non-obligative 
uh, a norm of the dirty reversible what now reversible a uh, 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 phase take note now, now that we have this electrophorous phosphate now take note the remaining xylulose four phosphate that was formed from uh, from the step one yeah from this step here we then combine with this electrophorous phosphate and the enzyme that we later act on it is called the trans ketonase and with that happens this xylulose five phosphate will be transformed to what now to the fructose cis phosphate and this erythrophosphate phosphate we did what we call the glaciatine phosphate and in turn you, know, you, you see the arrow in turn the arrow we move down to give us the fructose cis phosphate remember you know that for these are the the fructose cis phosphate and the glaciatine phosphate they are all uh, 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 they are all components of the glycolytic pathway which you are aware that this glaciadrite 3 phosphate would be with an enzyme this a here the enzyme here that will act on it is called the what now the triose phosphate isomerase moves down straight down to adolescence from adolescence to fructose one cis b phosphatase which we now for you what we call the fructose cis phosphate and he got to call the glucose cis phosphate and return the pathway continues and hit again another cycle of what we call the ribose 5 phosphate if you observe in this pathway there is a recycling of ribose 5 phosphate which we start to move across again to the of the dative phase now this is this brief summary of this non of the dative reversible phase in the pentose phosphate pathway starting from the step one that the two molecules of xylulose 5 phosphate and that one of these substrates yeah we combine with a single molecule of ribose 5 phosphate that the enzyme that we act on it is called the transcatalase to yield two molecules talking about what we call the pseudo epidocyl phosphate and the glasardia 3 phosphate and when that happens we have not said that theory two carbon from this ribose will be we be added to this xylulose 5 phosphate to yield what we call this to yield what we call that's from two years to yield what we call the pseudo eptulose 7 phosphate and when that happens we move and we have said that this enzyme is dependent on a cofactor called the thiamine pyrophosphate which is strictly on it that is what happens in this pathway from there we move to the trans adolescence again we move to what now the trans catalyst and this end the block of lecture for the pentose phosphate pathway precisely the non oxidative pathway the non oxidative pathway or the phase of this reaction okay